Hello and welcome to today's science class. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera? Hello. hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Excellent. And next we'll do our stretching sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we'll begin by stretching up high to the sky. And then we'll go down low, touch our toes. And now, Let's go back up high. This time, can we go tippy toe high? And let's have a wave while we're there. And then back down to touch your toes. Okay, just hands on hips. Let's have a wiggle. Side to side wiggle. Stop. Another wiggle. Side to side. Stop. Forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and stop. And then we'll go round, round and round, round and round, and stop. And then back the other way. Give our spines a good stretch before we sit back down. Round and round, and stop. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So who can tell me what we were learning about in science class in the last lesson? Excellent. The planet that we're living on. And what's the name of our planet? Earth. Excellent, guys. How do we spell Earth? E A R. T H. Excellent, guys. All together, Earth. And who can give me some facts about Earth? Who are some of the things that we live about on Earth? Excellent. The barrier that protects us from the sun and all the radiation is called atmosphere. How do we spell atmosphere, guys? A T M O S P H E R E. Excellent example. The cloud of gas that surrounds our planet and protects us from the sun and all the harmful radiation is called atmosphere. Excellent. Now, what sort of things do we have on planet Earth? 
What are we? People, humans, what are we an example of? Living things. On planet Earth, we have living things. L, I, V, I, N, G. Living things. H, I, N, G, S. Okay. Now, in the last lesson, we mentioned three main types of living things on planet Earth. First of all, there's us. What are we? Us. People, excellent, or humans. So living things, humans, H-U-M-A-N-S. And then the second type of living things, animals, excellent down, all of the animals on the planet. A N I M A L S. Humans, animals, and what was the third thing? Trees and plants. Excellent. Trees, how do we spell trees? E E S and plants. L A N T S. You see, the thing that sets planet Earth different from all the other planets that we know of, living things. Because we have our atmosphere, we have humans, animals, trees and plants. Excellent. And also, in the last lesson, we learned about the big bodies of water on planet Earth. Does any oceans, excellent Lakau. Does anybody remember how we spell oceans? C E A N S. So who can remember some of our oceans? Oceans, we have five of them, that's correct. Atlantic Ocean. A T L A N T I C. Atlantic. Anybody remember any others? Pacific Ocean. P A C I F I C. And what about the one that's near India? Indian Ocean, yes. I N T I A N. Indian Ocean. And then the ocean at the very top of the planet where it's very cold. Uh, 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 uh. Arctic. Arctic Ocean. A R C T I C. And one more at the very bottom of the planet. Southern, Southern Ocean. Actually, it has two names. We can call it Antarctic Ocean or Southern Ocean. So let's go with Southern. S-O-U-T-H-E-R-N. So there's our five oceans, guys. Atlantic, Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic and Southern. Yes, they are the big bodies of water that are on planet Earth. But does anybody remember what we call the big bodies of land? Like the one on which we're standing and sitting now. We had oceans and not countries, bigger than countries. Continents, excellent plow. Continents. How many on planet Earth? Seven, yes, well done, well remembered. C O N T I N E N T S. Continents. Okay, so let's begin with the continents we are on now. 
Anybody remember? Thailand is the country. What continent is Thailand in? It begins with A. Asia, yes. Asia. I'm from England. Does anybody remember what continent England is in? It begins with E2. Spain, Germany, Italy, England are all part of Europe. Europe. E. U R O P E. And then we have another consonant beginning with A. Af. Africa. Well done. A. F R I C A. Asia. Europe. Africa. And then where do kangaroos come from? Australia, yes, Australia can be called a continent too. That also has two names, Australasia or Australia. And we'll go with Australia today. A U S T R A L I A. We've got two Americas. Lacau's just given me one, North America. And, and South America, there's two consonants, so we can North America, A M E R I C A, South America, S O U T H A M E R I C A. And our final consonant, where all the polar bears live, where not quite Atlantic is the ocean, Antarctic. You were close, Antarctica. A N T A R C T I C A. Hey, so all of our continents, guys, Asia, Asia. Europe, Europe, Africa, Africa. Australia, Australia, North America, America. South, America. South America, Antarctica. Brilliant. Our five oceans, Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic and Southern Ocean, sometimes known as Antarctic Ocean. And on Earth, we have three types of living things. We have humans, animals, trees and plants. And what's the big protective bubble that surrounds our planet that keeps us alive? Atmosphere. Excellent, guys. Very good recap. Well done. And what we're going to do today is we're going to move on a little bit more to understand about the Earth. Guys, does anybody think the Earth moves or stays still? That's right. The Earth spins through space. Does anybody know how long a day is? How long is one day? 24 hours. Does anybody know why a day is 24 hours? Why do we say 24 hours one day? Because that's how long it takes the earth to spin around once. That's why in one day, you'll have one daytime and one nighttime. Because it takes 24 hours for the earth to rotate. And again, guys... Why do we say a year is 365 days? Why 365 days for one year? Any ideas? One day is one spin of the earth. But what happens in one year? Any ideas? One year or 365 days 
is how long it takes the earth to move around the sun. That's why we have our different climates. Sunny season or summer, rainy season and cold season in the winter because the earth is moving further away. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at a PowerPoint presentation so we can get a better understanding. Ready guys? The rotation of the earth. Excellent guys, very well done. So now let's turn our chairs to have a look at the TV screen and we can have a look at the PowerPoint presentation. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, the rotation of the earth. Yes, what can you see in the picture, guys? Earth, yes. What is all the blue things you see? Water, water oceans, yes. Is there more blue or more green? Yes, that's why sometimes the Earth is called the blue planet, because it's two-thirds water. And how about the green things? What do you think they are? Continents. The green and brown land masses are the continents. And how about the white things? What do you think the white things are? Clouds. Yes, we have oceans, continents, and clouds. The earth, the earth rotates, rotates on its axis. Yes. You see this central line here? That's an imaginary line that goes straight through the Earth. And what happens is the Earth rotates on its axis once per day. It takes 24 hours to rotate, which is why we count 24 hours as a day. So we can say it takes 24 hours for the earth to rotate one cycle. This is why we call 24 hours one day. The earth rotates around the sun. Yes. All planets move around the sun. It takes 365 days for the earth to rotate around the sun. And what do we call 365 days, guys? One year. That's why it's a year, because it takes the Earth to move around the Sun. This is why we call 365 days one year. We can use a watch or clock to tell us the time. But what happened in the past before we had clocks, before we had watches? How did they tell the time before clocks, before watches? What would any ideas? In old times, people would use a sundial to tell the time. You see these things here, guys, in the pictures? Sundials. They can tell the time. You see the shadow here? What happens is, as the earth rotates around the sun, 
the shadow will change, will move around too, like the hands on a clock. And what they can do by judging at where the shadow is, they can tell the time. This is why it's called sundial. Sundials use the shadow of the sun to tell the passing time. Here we can see one o'clock, two o'clock. So what time is it now? Three o'clock, yeah. And in one hour, the shadow will have moved to here. Four o'clock. Any questions, guys? Excellent. Well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation. And what we're going to do now is a stretch sequence, guys. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this sequence, we're going to play a game. We're going to have a game of teacher says. So listen carefully, guys. If teacher says, we can do. If teacher doesn't say, don't do. Teacher says, hands on stomach. Teacher says, hands on chest. Teacher says, hands on head. Hands on hips. Very good. Teacher says, hands on shoulders. Teacher says, hands on knees. Teacher says, touch your feet. Stand up straight. <laughs> Teacher says, stand up straight. Teacher says, raise your right leg. Put it down. Teacher says, put it down. Teacher says, raise your left leg. Put it down. Teacher says, put it down. Teacher says, jogging on the spot. Stop. <laughs> Teacher says, stop. Teacher says, turn around. Turn back the other way. <laughs> Teacher says, into a ball. Five. Four, three, two, one, jump. <laughs> teacher says, jump. And teacher says, sit down, guys. Excellent, very good. And now it's time for our practical activity because what we're going to do for the remainder of the lesson is we're going to help our students to make their own sundials just like they've seen in the PowerPoint presentation. And then for the final activity, we will take some students outside to demonstrate how it works. Because we can't see in the classroom, we don't have any sun. So what you need to do for this lesson, teachers, is just to provide each of your students with a paper plate. And then we can do the sundial together in a step-by-step -step operation. So, one paper plate I will use myself, and then I will give them all to my students. We have Lakau for you. Thank Rao, you. you're welcome. Let's see how many is there. Bangpon, you. you're welcome. Dan, you. for you. Ned, for you. Thank you. Pak for you. Pat, for you. Nadia, for you. Okay, and Chu, for you. You're welcome. Okay, guys. So first thing we need to do with our sundial is we take our plate and we will turn it upside down. Now, taking your pencil, draw a little point exactly in the middle. Okay? Like this. Draw a point on your pencil exactly in the middle because that is where our pencil will go when we finish designing. Now, because our sundial is going to work like a clock,
How many hung? How many hours on a clock? Twelve. Twelve. Exactly. So what we do first, guys, is write the number twelve on the top of our sundial. Number twelve, like a clock. Basically, what we're doing now is we're going to draw a clock face, but we're going to do it on our sundials. So on a clock face, number 12 goes at the top. What goes at the bottom? Six. Six. Okay, so let's do number six at the bottom, guys. So we have 12 o'clock, and at the bottom we have... Six o'clock. Six. Yes. What comes between twelve and six o'clock? Three and nine. Three and then nine. Okay, guys. So either side, we can have three and nine o'clock too. Make sure to draw your digits quite big so when you use your sundial, you can tell what time it is. But this is just a rough guide because in a moment we're going to give our students time to design their own and colour however they like to. Okay, so now our sundials should be looking like this. We've got 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Okay? And what we need to do now is we will fill in the gaps what goes between 12 and 3, guys? 1 o'clock, 1 and 2. But make sure to draw them at regular intervals so that when the shadow of our sundial moves along, you can see what time it is. So 12, 1, 2, 3. Then what comes after 3 and before 6? Four and five. five. Okay. Four, five. Here we go. So we've got all together twelve. Ready, guys? Twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six. And what comes after six before nine? Seven and eight. Let's draw seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now seven, eight, nine, and our clock face, clock face is almost finished. What comes after nine and before twelve? Ten and eleven. Ten and eleven. Okay, so now your sundials should look like a clock face. We should have all the hours of our clock going round in one hour motions. Are we all like this, guys? Everything okay like this? Okay, teachers, all of our students are ready now. They have the most important thing on their sundial. They have the hours. So what we'll do now is we'll pause the video and we'll allow our students 10 to 15 minutes to design and colour their own sundials however they want to. And they can use black to colour in the hours on their sundials too. So for the next 10 to 15 minutes, guys, use your colours to design your own sundials however you like to. You can use stars, the sun, weather, animals, or anything you like. You can draw and design your sundials however you like to. So, excellent. Bang pong, very good. And now you can colour and design however you like to. Down, that's great. Lovely, Nadia, that looks brilliant. Flowers, hearts, animals... Or because it's a sundial, you can use weather things too. Totally up to you. Think back to what we've learned in science class. 
you could draw a picture of the earth, like a globe. And that's a good prayer well done. Remember to colour in the hours on your sundial. Make them bolder so you can see them. Excellent. That's good. It's you. So I would recommend the hours made black so we can see them. Or yellow. Okay. So that you can see them. Brilliant. As long as we can see them, nice bright colours will be good. Some very good designs, guys. Net, okay. So what will you draw on your sundial? Maybe a spaceship? Or a dinosaur? That's excellent, Net. I think Net's drawing a sun. So now our students are busy designing and creating their own sundials. What we need to do now, guys, is take a pencil and remember the dot that you've drawn in the center of your sundial. What we're going to do now is we will place a pencil through the center of our sundial, like this. Because this is going to show how when we take it outside, the shadow falls on the time, and as the earth spins, it will, means we will be able to tell the time. So take a pencil and carefully just place it through the center of your sundial. Yes? Yes? That's it, like that? Okay? And now, that needs to remain in place in the center of your sundial. And when we take it outside, teachers, you might need to help your students a little bit with this activity. Okay, so Pang Pun, you see, when you go outside, it will go like this. So it will stand. You don't want your hole to be too big. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Anybody needs any help with their holes? Nadia? Okay, so now. Very nice. Okay. Nadia is ready. She has her sundown. Okay. Somebody, you can do it. Okay, Pak Bung is ready. Down is ready. What you can do, guys, once you've placed it through, turn your Turn your pencil upside down so the eraser's inside because it sticks better. There you go. Okay, but what we can do, bang bang, once we've got the hole, turn the eraser side and put that because it'll stay better. Because you don't want your hole to be too big. Let's take a look. See? Okay. And then when the shadow falls net, we'll be able to see from the shadow what time it is. So now we have come outside because what we need for our sundials to show is we need the sun. And as you can see, my students here have made a selection of lovely sundials. And what we're going to have you do now is to look at the sundials. And you will see that the shadow from the sun is being reflected by the pencil to give a time. Now unfortunately, we don't have the time to wait, but if we waited one hour, the sun will have moved around on its axis so that the time has changed. But what we will do is we will demonstrate for you in the video. So now you can take a look at the times on our student sundials. We have 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock again, 8 o'clock, 5 o'clock and 5 o'clock. 
what we can do now guys if we just turn our sun dials slightly you can see how the shadow moves too and this is what happens when the sun moves on its axis it rotates and as the sun rotates around the sundial, you can see the shadow. The shadow changes too. And this reflects the changing times as the day progresses. Before people had watches and clocks, this is how people told the time. They used sundials to follow the path of the air via the sun so that they could tell the time. And I think it was a very good way of doing it. And now my students can take their sundials home and they don't need to use their watches. You can watch, use your sundials at home, guys, can't you now? Yes? Excellent. So welcome back to class. And as you can see here, all of my students have done a fantastic job designing their sundials. Can you show them to camera, guys? Look at them brilliant sundials. And we hope you've had a good time designing your sundials too in your class. And that's it for today's lesson. So we hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again soon. Can we all wave to say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you next time.